everyone, it's Stacey and today we're doing our mystery block of the month. It's block number two and we're going to be doing this block. I've named it the Love Squared block because I did change it up from a block that I found and then I didn't know if this was actually a traditional block. I couldn't find it online so I decided to give it my own name. I called it the Love Squared block because there's lots of squares in it and it's our February block and February is of course Valentine's Day and the month of romance. So there you have it, I've called it the Love Squared block. So today's going to be a little bit different because I did have a request to show how I cut my fabric and I did a poll on my Facebook group and over a hundred members also agreed that they'd like to see that. I might have gone a little bit overboard but let's just see, please bear with me and then maybe at the end you can leave a comment and let me know if you'd rather I keep doing the cutting instructions or I skip them next time. To create the Love Squared block, we're going to need five different fabrics and then to create these outer rectangles here, you're going to need to cut one six and a half by seven inch piece and then two three and a half by six and a half inch pieces. Then we've got the squares. We've got pink here and here, purple here and here, blue, blue, green, green. And that makes up four different fabrics. Of course, yours won't be these exact colors, but for four different fabrics, you need to cut one three and a half by seven inch piece. So I've got my five fabrics here and I've also got my leftovers from our last block that we did. Now, remember we need to cut these at three and a half inch strips. And that's also what we did last week. We won't always be cutting at that size. But if you've got any strips that you could reuse, definitely reuse them now. If you don't, then what I'm going to do is, let me take that purple fabric, it's a new fabric, and then let's cut that into the size that we need it. So of course, I've always pressed my fabric before I cut it. I'm gonna take my fold, line it up on a line here on my mat, and I'm just gonna make sure I'm starting off with a nice straight line. So I'm going to work out the best line. I'm just going to move it across a bit because I don't want to cut that much off and waste it. So I'm checking my folds on a line. I'm going to line up my ruler with the best line that lines up with the edge of the fabric, cutting off all this rough edge here. And that's 16 for me. It will be different for you. Then what I'm doing is I'm lining up the line on my ruler to the fold of my fabric. Then I'm going to line up my ruler with 16 on my mat at the top and at the bottom and then cut. Now I know I've got a perfect right angle. So what I'm going to do is flip that over, line up that fold on a line again but I'm also going to line up the edge that I just cut on a line as well. And then once it's sitting in there perfectly, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to count three and a half across because we know we need to cut strips of three and a half. So I'm going to go one, two, three and a half. I'm going to find a line on my ruler and line it up with the folded edge again. I'm making sure that the edge that I just cut is on the three and a half inch mark. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a strip. And whatever's left over, I know we're gonna be able to reuse for future blocks. So I'm just gonna pop this aside. Now I've got a perfect three and a half inch strip. What I'm going to do is line it up on another line. I've got lots of lines going on here, so I'm just going to move it down. And I'm just going to cut these salvages off. So just getting it perfectly sitting on a line. Then I'm going to take my ruler and find any line on my ruler, line it up with the edge that I just cut. It should also be lining up perfectly down the bottom. And if we counted that, that would be three and a half inches. And then I'm just cutting these salvages off. Once I've double checked, triple checked, and I'm happy, I'll cut. 
Now I've got three really nice straight edges. I'm simply going to flip that around. Now I only need one piece of this and it's doubled up. So actually what I'm going to do is open it up. It doesn't matter that the wrong side's facing me. And I'm going to measure seven inches and I'm starting at zero. So then I would cut at seven. Remembering you might be starting at one. So then you just cut it eight. So let's cut it eight just for argument's sake. So I'm lining up the edge of my fabric on a line at the top and on the side. And then I'm going to line up my ruler on eight, which is the marking on my mat. Then I'm making sure the line of my ruler is aligned with the edge of my fabric. And once I'm happy that all of that's aligned, I'm going to cut. So now this is the first piece for my squares. Don't worry, we're going to sew them together and cut them because it's a little bit quicker. But we need to take four different fabrics and cut three and a half inches by seven. So let's just check that. Just bringing it down to my bottom corner. And I can see that that's perfect. It's three and a half inches by seven. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my scraps and check if there's any scraps from the last block that we did that would work for this. And if not, I'm going to repeat the exact same process that I just did. I've got my four different fabrics cut at three and a half inches by seven inches. Now I'm going to cut my rectangle pieces and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to cut a three and a half inch strip and then I'll work from that. So to get started, I need to make sure I've got a nice straight edge, cutting off all the raggedy bits. And then I'm just going to flip that over, line it up, line up that fold on the line on my mat, line up the edge here on the line of my mat. Now, if yours won't line up, that means you've cut it crooked and I'm afraid you will have to cut it again if you want to get nice straight strips. Then I'm going to measure three and a half inches on my ruler. Finding a line on my ruler and lining it up with the fold of my fabric and then lining up the edge that I just cut at three and a half inches. Once I've double checked, triple checked, I'm cutting. Oh, and if your ruler moves, just pause, readjust. Okay, setting that aside. Then I'm gonna cut off that salvage again, lining up this edge on a line on my mat, lining up the edge on a line on my ruler, just cutting that salvage off, just checking that I am catching all the salvages. And cutting. Now we need two three and a half by six and a half inches. Well, we know it's three and a half inches wide, so now we need to cut it at six and a half inches long. So I'm just going to line up that edge on zero or wherever you want to, and then you just add six and a half inches, but we'll start at zero. Making sure that your edges are lined up on the line on the side and at the top. So we're gonna get a nice straight cut. Then finding six and a half on the mat, taking your ruler and lining it up with six and a half at the bottom and at the top, because you can accidentally have it a bit crooked and then you wouldn't get a nice straight cut. So let's make sure it's at six and a half at the top and the bottom. Then lining up a line on the ruler to the edge of your fabric and cutting. So I'm at six and a half inches long and it's doubled up because I need two pieces. So now I've got my two pieces at three and a half inches by six and a half inches. So for the next piece for the rectangles, we actually need a six and a half inch strip by seven inches. So what I'm going to do is take my fabric, find my nice straight cut, 
and my ruler isn't six and a half inches wide so I'm going to have to line it up on the edge of my ruler here on zero or of course I could do it on one and I'm going to cut that at six and a half inches wide doing everything I just did before checking I'm at six and a half inches at the top and the bottom checking my line is lined up on a fold side. Now we'll cut those salvages off again. Making sure I caught both sides. Flipping it over. Now we only need one piece so it's doubled up. I'm going to open it up. Line up the edge and the top on a line on my mat. Find seven inches and cut so now I've got my six and a half inches by seven inch piece and we can just check that and that's perfect so now I've cut all my pieces I'm ready to sew don't worry all the cutting instructions are over on my blog and I'll pop the link above so let's start off by making this middle piece here. So take the two fabrics that you'd like to be the squares for the center. And what we're going to do is face them right sides together and just sew along that edge. So now I've got my two pieces of fabric here. I'm just going to make sure that the top edges, the side edges and the bottom edges are all lined up nicely. And when I'm happy, I will just pop one pin in there. It never hurts. It's entirely up to you. And then I'm just going to sew along this edge. I'm going to use my quarter inch foot so I get a nice quarter inch seam allowance. And I've made sure my sewing machine is stitching nicely. And I'm stitching at stitch length too. I'm not going to worry about a back stitch at the beginning or the end. Just going to sew off the edge those threads and then let's press so we're just going to set the seams and that just means we're going to press where we just sewed and that just helps make the stitches set in place like the name implies and it just makes them extra strong and helps the block lay flatter then we're going to open it up and just press towards the dark if you've got a dark side otherwise it doesn't really matter so I'm going to open it up finger press it because we don't want any creases in here. Once I'm happy, I'm going to press. I'll just give the whole thing a press. I love my pressing. And now let's cut. Now we're just going to cut it in half. Obviously we don't want to cut it in half where we just sewed it. We're cutting it in half lengthways and we want to cut it in half so each side measures three and a half inches. And if we measure it now it should be seven inches perfectly. So I'll just pop my ruler on top and I can either find three and a half on my mat or on my ruler. But because it's lined up on the zero it's both. And then I'm just going to cut it at three and a half inches. Okay, then what we're going to do is spin that around and we're going to fold the right sides together and join them. So back to the sewing machine. So now we're going to join them and because we press the seams one way, cut it in half, we're going to get our nested seams here which is perfect. So what we do is we've got this seam folded over and coming this way, this seam coming over and folded over this way. And then we're just going to butt them up together so they can't go any further. And that's going to create a perfect meeting point there. So once you're happy, we're just going to pin that in place, making sure that these edges here are also lined up. And I like to put a pin on either side just to make sure it's nice and secure. 
I can see those edges are not perfectly lined up, so just fixing that before I pin it. Okay, so just checking these edges are also lined up nicely. You can pop a pin in if you'd like. And just keeping an eye on the seam underneath, it's actually folded up. So as I'm sewing, I'm just going to make sure that's how it's sitting as I sew over it. I don't want to accidentally push that seam down because we want our blocks to sit nice and flat. So again, no back stitching, just starting and going right to the very end. Coming off the edge, and I will just trim that thread while I'm here and on the other edge as well. And now let's give that a quick press. So just sitting those seams again, opening it up and it doesn't matter which way we're going to press the seams, giving it a finger press so it's sitting nicely. We don't have any creases in here. Once you're happy, you've got all those little creases out. Let's press that. And let's just give it a once over. Let's move on to the next step. So now I've got the piece that I just sewed. I'm going to take the rectangle fabrics that I cut earlier and I'm going to take the pieces that we cut smaller and we cut two of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew one on either side. So all I'll do is make sure that the right sides of the fabric are facing each other. Make sure all those edges are lined up on either side and at the top here. I will just pop a pin in. And then I'll sew that side and then I'll do the same on the other side. I will just keep an eye on that seam making sure it's facing the right way and mine's facing down so it will be fine. Then I'm just going to turn it over, open that up, take the next piece, right sides facing down, lining up the edges and doing exactly the same thing. Let's give that a press. So let's set both the seams. Then we're going to press towards the largest piece. So we'll finger press that open. We've got those seams coming across towards the larger piece and pressing. And doing the same on this side. So taking the remaining pieces that are left, what we're going to do is we're going to take the biggest piece that we cut for our rectangles and we're going to cut the remaining two pieces for the squares and we're going to sew them on either side. It doesn't matter which side. And you could get this wrong. You could accidentally sew them on that way, but you can see that that's not lining up nicely. I've got a quarter of an inch left over on either side. So just make sure you are sewing the seven inch length to the seven inch length. But all we're going to do is exactly what we did before, fold the right sides of the fabric together, line up all those edges, pin and sew on both sides. So let's just set the seams again. And once again, we're just going to press our seams to the larger piece, which is actually this piece this time. So just make sure they're facing in. Give it a finger press and press. And do the same on the other side, making sure those seams are facing towards our larger piece. So now we're going to cut it in half. So we've got the three fabrics in each strip. It measures seven inches wide. So we're going to cut it at three and a half inches. I'm just going to move it up. Line it up on an edge on my mat. Might be a little bit wonky. We don't want it really wonky at this stage, but it might be a little bit wonky because we've sewn three pieces of fabric together. Then I'm going to put my ruler on top count three and a half inches so one two three and a half line up that half mark on the edge of my fabric 
line up a line here lining up to this edge of the fabric and when I've double checked triple checked I'll cut okay now we're on the home stretch so taking our main piece that we've sewn together and then we've got our two new strips that we just made we're going to take one and place it at the top we're going to take the second one rotate it around and place it at the bottom that way I'll just move that up for you that way we've got the purple across from each other and my peach across from each other and then what I'm going to do is sew both sides together I'll start on one I'm going to fold it down with the right sides together and now we've got two seams to nest. We've got one here. So I'm taking those two folded pieces, pushing them up together as far as they can go, lining up these edges and pinning. And then we've got a second one. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing, lining up those edges, pushing them together, Lining up the edges here and pinning. And if you'd like, you can pop in a few extra pins. It never hurts. And now let's sew them together. Let's just open that up, make sure this piece is going to be sewn on in the correct order so the purples are across from each other and the peaches are across from each other. Of course your fabrics will be different. Folding that down, marrying up those seams or rather nesting those seams, pinning and sewing. Let's give that one last press. Setting those seams again on both sides. And this time we'll press the seams out towards the outer edge. So again, finger pressing and then pressing. And then we might as well give it one press over the whole piece or over the whole block rather and there we have it so that's this month's mystery block of the month the love squared block i hope you enjoyed that now please make sure you leave a comment below letting me know if you'd like me to continue on doing the cutting instructions or if you rather i skip that next time like i did the first block now all the instructions can be found on my website and the, there'll be a link down below in the description and they're completely free and they also include the cutting instructions. But some people have been asking me if I've got a PDF copy and I have created one. I'm charging a small fee for these and you can purchase them on Etsy and there's a link in the description below or of course over on my website. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them, please like, subscribe and leave a comment.